Hi, everyone. I'm Sharon Dynack, president of UCross. Before we get started, I want to thank our resident artists for joining us this evening for this conversation, and I want to thank all of you who are connecting by video. Over the last several months, UCross has hosted a few Zoom events, such as our UCross Spotlight series and online artist workshops, but this is for Native American visual artists in 2017, which will expand to Native American writers in 2021. We might think of this event as the start of an ongoing conversation about the value of uninterrupted time uh, for creative work, and in particular, the time, space, cross-cultural and cross-disciplinary conversation that UCROSS fosters. Throughout the global pandemic, like so many organizations, UCROSS has been forced to adjust and revise our plans. During this adjustment period, we've created new ways to communicate and engage with the greater UCROSS community, and we found that the bond between UCROSS and its alumni artists and friends has only strengthened. We are heartened by the response of our UCROSS community and the resilience of our artists. UCROSS, with its vast landscape and sky, is a place that invites distance. We've taken that spirit and translated it into what you might call artistic distancing to keep us all healthy and safe. We're very fortunate to have a number of separate buildings so that each of our artists has their own private living and studio spaces and much open air in between. How we've adjusted to the new realities is one topic. How our artists have adjusted is another, but they're intricately related. UCROSS exists to support and serve artists. Panel conversations like this one allow us to hear directly from the artists about their work, their creative process, how they've been affected during the crisis, what artists need, and what a residency means to them. What do we make of this challenging time? How can our residency experience help artists to focus on creating new work, build new connections, promote cross-cultural conversation, and embrace transformation? In mid-March, UCROSS had to temporarily close its doors for the first time in its 37-year history. We promised every UCROSS artist whose residency was cut short or delayed another residency opportunity, which includes our four artists today. To begin, I'd like to introduce you to them. David Cody is a playwright, opera librettist, and arts journalist based in New York City. His, his reporting and reviews appear in The Observer, Theater News Online, American Theater, and other publications. David has written companion books for the Broadway musicals Wicked, Jersey Boys, and Spring Awakening. He was the longest serving theater editor and chief drama critic of Time Out New York until 2017 and his journalism has also appeared in the New York Times, The Village Voice, The Guardian, and Opera News. Elizabeth Duffy is a multidisciplinary artist whose current work explores the subjects of surveillance and incarceration and their intersection with domestic life. Elizabeth, Elizabeth's work is influenced by feminist art, interior decoration, and craft, and what she calls the complicated ideals of home. She lives and works in Providence, Rhode Island, and teaches in the art department at Roger Williams University in Rhode Island, and in the graduate program at Vermont College of Fine Art. Nicole Sarah Simpkins is an artist and educator who lives and works in Minneapolis. She makes installations, mixed media drawings, prints, artist books, and performances. In her work, ecology and psychology, world and self, meet in constant entanglement. Nicole has shown work in the Twin Cities at the Future, the White Page Gallery, and the Paul Whitney Larson Gallery, as well as other venues nationally and abroad. Michelle Stone is the author of the novels Border Child and The Iguana Tree. She was the 2018 recipient of the Patricia Wynn Award for Southern Literature and winner of the South Carolina Fiction Award. Her novels have been reviewed favorably by the San Francisco Chronicle, The New Yorker, The Atlanta Journal-Constitution, Publishers Weekly, and many others. Along with being a speaker, educator, and community volunteer, Michelle is a fellow of the Aspen Global Leadership Network. She lives in Spartanburg, uh, South Carolina. Um, so I thought what we might begin with here is um, we have both um, Elizabeth and Nicole were here in March 
and we're part of the um, rapid departure on March 18th. <laughs> and, um, and now you're back in a different season. <laughs> um, so I thought, I don't know, we could start with you, Elizabeth. Um, how does it feel to be back? And um, are, are you finding, you know, the psychic space in the middle of all the worries of the world to, to do your work? And how does it seem? Oh, very much so. Um, I have to say my, the words, the sort of um, sense of elation that I feel here is just pretty stratospheric. Um, I was here in March, we closed down after about two weeks, and I had had a great opportunity to delve in my work then. Um, and then it was also a time for me to explore the landscape, hike a bit. Really, it was my first time in Wyoming, so it was a new, new place for me, completely revelatory. Um, and I, when we were closed down, I, I did get a fair amount of work done and had the good fortune to, lots of creatures here. Yes. So if you see a fly <laughs> that. that likes me. Um, yeah, so I, I did a, a significant amount of work, even in the two weeks, because as you were asking, um, just all the kinds of daily life, the little things that we all do, the emails, the dishes, the sort of, you know, what do I wear this day? Um, all those things just evaporate and there's an incredible generosity of time of people here to support your work. So coming back has been something just otherworldly for me. Um, mostly because I, I've never had an opportunity to do a residency and think about this, the place and, and, you know, normally when you apply for a residency, you, you know, you write a, a proposal for something a year in advance. Oftentimes you, it's a year later if you get accepted and you might be in a different place with your work. Here, I was here in March, um, and I was able to sort of gather all these ideas for my work and now come back um, to be here in August and carry out some of the things that were in my imagination at that moment and re hopefully realize those while I'm here. So it has been something just, I'm so full of immense gratitude um, and to everyone here, yeah. this whole staff. So thanks for that question. It's great to see you. What about you, Nicole? <laughs> How does it feel? Um, I feel just so grateful to this place and this landscape. I mean, I'm like looking out at the hills as I'm talking and um, this is actually the third time I've been to this part of Wyoming, um, including coming to Gentel and then coming here in March and then getting to come back now. And there's just something so impactful about the quietness and the kind of attention that the landscape demands. It's like, I can't, like, I just can't stop looking at it. I just am <laughs> just really like bewitched by um, the quietness and the, and the relationships between forms and the colors and the type of attention that it um, cultivates in me is really nourishing to my soul as well as to my work. And I'm, I'm just so grateful to have the space to, to be here. Great. And then um, David and Michelle were um, forced to wait. You were planning to be here in the spring and then the emails began <laughs> and the phone calls <laughs> and the emails and the um, and so I don't know, you know, what happened during those months, but, um, David, why don't you, um, you know, what, what is it like now after all of that waiting time to, <laughs> um, well, I, I didn't think it was actually going to happen. You know, I was like the, the world was coming to an end and somehow, you know, getting some weeks at an, art, an artist residency didn't seem like a, a priority in the, in the, in, in, in the, what fate had for me, but. No, I mean, um, I was supposed to come at the end of March, and that, of course, got, you know, canceled. And, but I th you, you, at some point, a few months later, I don't know exactly when, you were like, we were thinking about August, maybe. And I was like, okay, well, please, yes. You know, and of course, you, you know, you don't want to nudge, you don't want to, but I kept in touch, and so it all turned out well. I mean, 
it's funny because I, I've been in New York uh, in um, uh, Inwood, which is a neighborhood at the northern tip of Manhattan. And, you know, my existence was kind of already kind of cloistered and, and like sort of I was just writing and working and living in my small apartment. But, you know, but this was, you know, I mean, so I it was not a, an artist's colony exactly, but it was also not like a war zone. So, um, but, I, but still coming here, it was just like, yeah. it was just like space, air, not having to wear a mask to get some milk, you know? Um, so it was, it was, I mean, which, you know, wear, wear a mask, wear a mask. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, what's the matter with you? Um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, it was just when it, when you know when you said it's happening, it was just like oh my oh my goodness, and yeah, just to want to I would just say also as an, as a as a kid from small town New England, artists colonies um, these residencies are great opportunities to to just see the country, and you know they're like huge immersions in how the rest of the country lives, you know, and that's that's value that's valuable to me. That's great. What about you, Michelle? Did you think it was going to happen? No, I didn't. <laughs> so um, I was supposed to have come in April. And like David, it was canceled. And you know, the world just sort of tilted at that point. And I really didn't think it was going to happen. And then I got the call <laughs> or the email, good news, it's happening. And um, like you, I thought, oh, I hope I can be there as soon as it opens. And fortunately, it worked out that I could. So um, yeah, I came uh, two weeks ago, been here for two weeks. And you know, the pandemic has caused us all to really slow down. Um, and for in that there have been some silver linings, you know, the hustle and bustle. Um, I have a family of five, three kids. So that's been a silver lining that we're all home. But that's, <laughs> that's also been um, a great reason to get to a residency to get some work done because um, you know, we're all on top of each other for the last three months. And when I walked in, I'm staying in the depot. And when I walked into my space the first day, I set my things down. And then I saw a sign on the wall and it said the rule, like one rule, one rule here. It said the rule, no one may interrupt your workspace unless the building is on fire. <laughs> yes, that is my kind of rule. Um, but yeah, no, no, to echo the other three, it's really a magical place here. It is such a gift and I'm so grateful for it. I um, have gotten more writing done truly in the last 12 days than I've done in the past many months. Mm -hmm. um, and as Nicole alluded to, it's so beautiful. There's so much nature here. And for me as a creative writer, Yes, a lot of work happens at the desk, but I would say an equal amount happens in my head when I'm out on my walks, when I'm at home. And so here every day I get up and I work hard for a few hours and then I go on these amazing world-class hikes that just kind of gives me a clear head to come back to the desk and get back to the work. So um, it really is a magical place and I'm so happy that I got to experience it. Oh, we're happy too. <laughs> and, and, you know, I was thinking that, you know, UCRUS, there really are a lot of different um, kind of protocols in place now. It's Will and Nicole and Elizabeth, you know, it's, it feels a little bit different than when you were here in March and we're not in the schoolhouse dining room. Um, even though it's large, this is larger. <laughs> um, and I'm just wondering, besides the uninterrupted time and focus, um, you know, the sense of community is something that the artists always talk about in connecting with each other. Um, are, are you finding ways to connect with, uh, how does that seem to you this time with, with you know, the more distancing and the, the six feet and the, um, you know, separate buildings? Um, how does that compare to March? <laughs> It's definitely different. I mean, part of my inspiration to come to artist residencies is definitely to make friends mm -hmm. um, beyond just the uninterrupted time. And yeah, it's felt different. There's definitely a greater sense of solitude. I've made really good friends with the grand piano in <laughs> the oh. composer's cabin where I'm staying, nice. which I play the piano terribly. And like once every six years, try to learn like a Chopin prelude. Um, 
And I've made really good friends with the creek, which I tried to get into every day and made really good friends with like the birds that I talked to and, you know, and we share dinner and like chat at dinner, but, Mm -hmm. um, definitely the sense of like conviviality and hanging out that, um, you know, that, that I hope for from artist residencies does feel different this time around. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what about you, Elizabeth? Um, yeah, I, I agree with Matt Nicole, and I do think that, you know, it's, it's quieter. Um, for me, it's been an opportunity for, to really, really, really focus on my work, and, and that's been great. Um, I immediately developed a kinship with these wonderful people, and the staff here is just beyond stellar, so, and they're always you know, checking in to, making, to make sure that we're not too lonely and, and afraid. <laughs> Some of us from urban places are, I too have been taking um, walks every day, hiking up to these majestic teepee circles. Um, that's been incredible. I think I've, um, it's partly just coming back to a place that I now know. And right. so uh, I just feel usually when I go to a residency, there's a kind of couple of days where I'm sort of getting to know the place and the space and the people. So in that way, this has been so much easier for me because I came to, I'm coming to a familiar place. So that's been a real gift too. Um, but yeah, it's, we're not wild partiers. Um, <laughs> um, so that's, it's been more quiet for sure. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the variety of, um, I wasn't, I didn't really get a, a firm sense before I came here of the variety of types of nature here. I mean, you can go walk in the hills and it's extremely like um, desert-like and high altitude and and it just it's dry and hot and beautiful and severe and then you come back to the to the not the campus the the you do you call it the campus yes it's a yeah, campus, campus sure um and it's green and lush and it's like an oasis and deer are jumping and fox foxes are twitching their tails and you know so like it's it's the the variety of ty- like last year i was in nevada in the um silver uh, silver mines near the silver hills like near virginia city and all that uh, wonderful program called the the resident artist program of silver city nevada and you know it was really like stepping out into the moon going out there which it was great but there's the variety here is fascinating um mm-hmm. it's just like you know and, and of course the animals deer fox uh what else like every the birds, the birds the rabbits i mean it'd be great for a nature artist <laughs> you know I think. Yeah. <laughs> In the creek today, I made friends with a fish that was this big. <laughs> I was really surprised. I was like, this is not that big of a creek. Like, what are you doing? Why are you so big? How close, how close you? Like, very close. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's actually part of a fairy tale. <laughs> Don't kiss the fish. <laughs> that you know, that's funny you say it's part of a fairy tale. I swear one day I... I said, I feel like I'm in a Disney movie. Like, I, I, truly, my desk is sort of in a corner between two windows, and I looked out to my left, and there were 14 deer and a fox. And then I turned straight ahead, and there were turkeys, sandhill cranes, and goldfinch on the wire, um, and some sort of weed or, or some something that's um, gone to seed. And so these little tufts of things that look like dandelion fluff were just floating around in the air. It was sort of magical. Um, so yes, we are social distancing, and we're not having um, you know, quite that creative energy. Like you might get at a writing workshop when you're really immersed with a group. But as David said, I mean, the nature here, I have really taken great joy with that. I mean, every time I look out the window, yeah, there's some sort of little critter out there playing, and um, it's been really nice. So, We think there's been more critters, too. It's been so quiet out here when (laughs) we're closed out there. (laughs) And so I was thinking a little bit, you've said wonderful things about how a residency supports your work. Um, do, do you think in light of, I mean, this pandemic has um, really knocked us, you know, f- for so many loops. Um, do you think that the residencies, um, you know, are as important as before or, you know, more important? I'm just curious about like leaving your, you know, your home turf and, you know, 
taking the chances of traveling and, and going away. Um, does the, has it affected your work at all as well? Like um, what the changes in, in the world in the past few months? <laughs> I don't know. Nicole, do you have any sure. <laughs> thoughts? <laughs> yeah, you're looking right at me. Um, I think for me, I often am making work addressed to a space or an exhibition opportunity that I know I will have. And part of that is because to me, my work comes into existence when people are interacting with it. Like that is the work more than what I'm doing alone in the studio, um, which is a hard position to be in because it means if I don't show my work, it doesn't exist and I don't have that many opportunities to show it. Um, but being in a residency, I think offers a different kind of like space in which to address my work. Um, I've been thinking about that a lot, the ways that I sort of like need validation in order to exist and how I can, you know, kind of own that, but also think about some ways to shift that to be a space of um, being creatively fruitful more than a limitation. And I think there is something that, you know, you could describe it as like having permission or validation about coming to a residency, but I think there's something there's maybe something even deeper than that, that it, it's like an, an honoring of what it is that an artist does in the world mm -hmm. and actually acknowledging like, no, like what, what you do and what you are is important and we see you and we want to make sure that you get to do that. Um, and that's rare. It's really hard to find. It's really hard to believe that art is important when it's the thing that you, you know, you need to do in order to be who you are. Um, and I, I think for me, that's, that's a big part of what getting to come to an artist residency does for me is like, oh, right. Like I, I do exist. What I have to offer is something that is like wanted in the world. And, and I get to have this space of having that be honored and recognized. And, and that, that's very moving to me and really makes a lot of things possible for me. That's great. Do you want to, I want to follow on, on that because uh, so much of what Nicole said resonated for me and brings to mind, um, I had a teacher in grad school who said to us, what are you going to make when no one's looking? <laughs> and I have, I've had this a year off from teaching and it's been this incredible opportunity of time to really think about that and try to do that and realize that. I've been showing my works, you know, regularly for many, many years and it's really been great to take a breather and just be in the studio and kind of see what happens. And I feel like this space and place is offering us that. And it's something very rare. So I do feel that it is unique time. And I feel the importance, I mean, we see so many people who are making things, whether drawings or sculpture as I do, or um, baking sourdough bread and cooking. And it's just the creative spirit that's emerged out of this has really um, been really um, inspiring to me. I, would, I mean, I, while, while I was here, um, yeah, I don't know, I mean, talking about COVID art, you know, I mean, <laughs> it's like, which of course nobody, you know, which is sort of interesting, both sides of the position of the, like, don't, you know, I've seen many people on social media who are like, I don't want to see your COVID story or your COVID painting or, and it's like, <laughs> you know, or. That's social media for you. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's like, yeah, very, very uh, productive and constructive. Um, you know, but, but I'm, you know, and I understand that, but also it's like, well, you need to have art that art needs to respond to the times or mm -hmm. maybe some of it should. So I don't know. So I've been spending part of my time here working on a, a short opera, a short opera libretto uh, that is not commissioned to be thematically related to what's happening right now, but is, I mean, I think that they're, they're, they're gonna be done in Cleveland next year as like micro operas. And so the, the premise is, is, you know, vaguely very contemporary, a couple that breaks up and yet they're sort of trapped in the same apartment because they're afraid to go out. So trying to use like ideas of fear of the outside and of being cloistered in a small space, you know, more metaphorically than, you know, in any sort of documentary way and, you know, to find the humor and the humanity in the situation, so. But yeah, it's, it's interesting, I mean, the work is, you know, I don't know, the work is, it has to affect you somehow. Right. I mean, the situation has to affect the work. You know. Exactly. Michelle. 
you know, along that same line, I think art or writing, anything creative needs to speak to the human condition. I think any art worth its salt does. Um, and so having this time here during these unprecedented times when there's so much uncertainty, as a writer, you know, I like to address themes that connect us as human beings and speak to the human condition. And, and with all that's going on with this pandemic, what, what is the human condition? Um, and, and what does give us hope even in these uncertain times? And, and so being here in this space, sort of um, in a vacuum, kind of away from everybody else who's still running around with their hand sanitizer and their masks <laughs> and freaking out, um, and just, you know, we're frolicking with the foxes <laughs> and the sandhill cranes. <laughs> um, you know, think I, I, it's given me pause and time to really think of those things. Um, what gives us hope as human beings, any, e even in times of uncertainty? And, um, uh, you know, what ties us together? What pulls us through this? And how, even though my work, like David said, my work is um, a novel that I'm nearly finished with the first draft and it was set pre-pandemic, pre-COVID. Um, but still, there are these themes that um, I want to address and pulling back and kind of reflecting on where we've been for the last four months in this space has been really valuable for me. Great. Well, I don't know, does anybody, have you had any thoughts or there are questions I haven't asked or things that have come to your mind that you want to throw out there? Or? I'm just curious, turning it back to you, Sharon, like oh, sure. how has it been <laughs> for, I'm sure the staff and everyone here, like that whole process of coming back to the residency and how have your, how has that been, that experience for you? Well, I would just say it's, um, it's the greatest relief and um, energizing thing to have artists back at UCross. Um, you know, I, I love, I'm, I've lived here for many years. I love solitude and quiet and I've been, um, you know, incredibly grateful as I watch the news, you know, from my house, you know, over the months and, and know uh, the challenges of the, you know, the cities and, and everyone. Um, and then be looking out, as you said, <laughs> at the creek and the hills. Um, been very grateful, but it's been a little quiet. And <laughs> and when I would walk past the rock studios that were empty, you know, or Jesse's, and um, it just, you know, was starting to hurt a little bit. And mm -hmm. so I'm just grateful that um, all of you were able to come, and um, you know, we'll we'll keep making it, um, you know, work as as best we can. So, yeah, it's it's really. Great to have the artists here. Um, you know, I guess you know we we can stop. I mean, we're 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 getting relatively close to um, the most important moment in the artist day at UCross, which is dinner. But um, we're not quite there. <laughs> but um, we, didn't, we didn't talk about dinner. Yeah. Oh, oh, you want? Oh, my I, I, Go ahead, I, talk about dinner. I, I was, uh, I weighed 150 pounds when I came here. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, it's just two weeks. Two weeks. It's, yeah, it's really good. They feed you really, really good. Here. And Cindy, is, Cindy Brooks, the chef, is just, ah, uh, uh, yes, mwah. <laughs> that's, that's incredible. And, you know, just to mention about dinner as well, for, from my end, I joined you know, the artists for dinner intermittently, as you know, and I swear every time I come, I can barely fall asleep at night because everything that we talk about, I've learned so much from all of you and I'm thinking my mind is like so, um, you know, energized by, by what I hear. So the, the dinners really are um, important on, on both ends, but, um, and the lunches I think are also key, don't you think? Oh, to yes. uninterrupted time. So, much to look forward to. <laughs> so we always end up with food at UCross. <laughs> Well, I, you know, I just want to thank you guys for, um, you know, taking the time, you know, from your, I mean, we took them at the end of your busy art days and you're, you know, probably exhausted. So thank you for, for joining us. And it's wonderful to, to hear your perspectives and thank we'll you. do this again. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks to everybody.